Welcome to Rebel Speak and today's Be Encouraged. We are looking in John 1 at the person of Nathaniel. And I, I have always loved Nathaniel from a, a really young age and, and seasons of my life where in my journey for faith, I had grown very cynical. And I just was disappointed in the church. I was disappointed in followers of Jesus. I, ah, I just wanted to see something I wasn't seeing. And instead of having expectation and going to God with that yearning, I uh, found um, comfort in cynicism. And in the story of Nathaniel, we see someone who Jesus says, you're looking for truth. We see a man looking for truth and for whom truth has eluded him. And when he encounters Jesus, he's so quick to joy. Jesus kind of laughs at him like, wow, that was easy. And I think often behind the facade of cynicism is great passion, a great hope, and great yearning that's not found a worthy end. So let's, let's look at um, oh, we're at, uh, verse 43 in John chapter 1. All right. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He's collecting, at, at this point, he's collected a few disciples from John, and he's picking up disciples. And then after he's got these disciples with him, he'll go to Cana. And for those of us that know scripture, that's when he turns water into wine, that amazing moment where, I don't know, it's just a really cool moment where his time, he, his mom says her time's now, and, and she's the right person to say that to him. But, that, but that's a different story. So here we go. Okay. He's accruing disciples. He's looking and he's seeing and he's the people within um, his proximity, the people near him, the people he bumps into. He calls them and they join. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, come, be my disciple. Philip was from Bethsaida, Andrew and Peter's hometown. So he already has Andrew and Peter in his um, covey of disciples. And he invites here Philip. And then Philip, this is just such a beautiful moment, Philip went off to look for Nathaniel and told him. And I don't know, I, I can just see there's something about Philip, Philip that's so excited to found, find Jesus and so wants Nathaniel to know that he's found Jesus. Okay, And I don't know, sometimes I read the story and think of uh, Philip as this easily gullible person and Nathaniel's not on that side and like maybe Philip every other week is finding a Messiah. Maybe not. It's just kind of a, a lens I see in their relationship. But there's something about Nathaniel that Philip wants him to know that he's found the Messiah. We found the very person Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Okay, so Philip tells um, Nathaniel, sorry. Philip tells Nathaniel, we found him. He's, we found him. His name is Jesus. And he's the son of Joseph, Joseph from Nazareth. And here is this, like, are you joking? Nazareth is this outback. Like, if you remember, they know when Peter betrays, after Jesus, well, after Jesus' arrest, Peter betray, um, betrays Jesus because a, a woman there can tell where he's from. It's kind of like having a country accent. Like, some of us have accents that give away where we're from. And Nazareth was a part, uh, it's, it's just kind of cool. Right, that the Messiah comes from a part of the world that's looked down on and kind of mocked about. And we're going to see this cynical heart right now in Nathaniel. Like, Philip's come to tell him, I, I found the one whom Moses and the prophets wrote about. And Philip knows that Nathaniel is yearning. He's yearning for this real thing. It's, 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 it's the right time, right? It's kind of that Kairos moment. There, I, like we've got people at the, when Jesus was born, people at the temple waiting, there's this yearning and expectation and it's been years. Like it's an interesting, like there's something that God is raising up, but there's something in Nathaniel that does not want to be gullible. I will, I would, I'm not going to be gullible. I'm not going to be gullible. Do you ever feel that way? Like I don't, I, uh -uh. I'd rather, I'd rather miss it than be gullible. I'd rather miss the potential. And, and one wonders, what does Nathaniel think of Philip? Because one has a sense he doesn't think a lot about Philip, except that he comes. And so maybe, like, I think there's different ways of reading it. But there's something in Philip's heart that is immediately led to Nathaniel. Like, Nathaniel's going to want to know this. But there's something in Nathaniel that is cynical and does not want to be seen as gullible. So he says, Nazareth, ha, 
Nathaniel's like, Nazareth, can anything good come from there? You know, he's, I don't know, do you know parts of the world where, that everyone loves to mock and, and look down upon? Like, what good can come from Nazareth? Just come and see for yourself, Philip says. So there's this pleading, like, just come and, Philip knows that the moment Nathaniel um, connects with Jesus, he's going to see it's real. Philip knows, and he knows this is what Nathaniel's yearning for. He knows it. Do you have friends like that? Or, or maybe you're that person. Like, people know that you, you, you have so looked for the truth, and you've so given up, you know what I mean? Like, you're just on that, I don't know. I just feel that, like, where we get, when we give up for that which we yearn for, often very bad habits follow us. Like, we've lo we, we were created to carry this amazing hope in and for God, and we haven't found, we haven't had that encounter with God yet that has awakened that hope, and it's so easy to live on the side of cynicism at that point. But Philip knows that Jesus will wake Nathaniel up into joy. And so he says, um, come and see for yourself. And, and they do. As they approach, Jesus said, here comes an honest man, a true son of Israel. I, I think often when we are cynical, it's because we are honest people. And we truly, when he says a true son of Israel, you, you represent all that's good. All that's good ab about being the chosen people of, of Yahweh. Jesus talks about finding faith in people. He talks about seeing things in people. In this moment, as he sees Nathaniel, he sees something winsome. He sees something righteous. He doesn't see the cynic that Nathaniel's come. He sees the yearning and the logic behind that cynicism. He knows Nathaniel's hungering for truth. He knows it. He knows that he, like so many, have been waiting for this very day, this very day that is upon them. Such, such a beautiful thought. Jesus knows. I just want to say, Jesus knows that you're, the truth you're yearning for. Jesus knows about the thing that you've not yet found, that you're desperate to find. And it's why Jesus is the right person to go in that hunger to, the right person to go to in your hunger. Like if you find yourself where you've just gotten cynical about the church, I think that's easy to do. You've gotten hopeless. If faith just seems like a joke. It's so polarized and everything just seems stupid. Go to Jesus. Go to Jesus. He is worthy and he will tell you things about yourself that will set you free and bring you into that joy. That, that joy of creation that lives inside of Jesus, right? That joy of Eden that is inside of Jesus. That new Adam that has that fullness of life. That fullness of life that is yearning to leap out of you and hasn't, like it can't, it just got sadder. It just sat down harder. It just became that couch potato that just kind of drinks because it's easier to drink than to live in that disappointment. Turn to Jesus. <laughs> Be willing, have a, have, a, have a Christ encounter. Ask him, hey, <laughs> are you the Messiah? Are you capable of saving this world that's so hurting? Ask him and see what he says to you. So as they approach, Jesus said, here comes an honest man, a true son of Israel. Nathaniel knows that he, is, he knows. Jesus, something about what Jesus says to him awakens him out of his cynicism, not just slumber, but cynicism. I've had spiritual encounters like that where just a, a, such a minor word. My heart has leapt so deeply because something in me has for so long yearned for more. Like, God, I want more. I want you relevant. I want you relevant. You know, it, sometimes like it sounds so corny, the word deep, but like I want a God that's deeper than so much of the water that feels a little shallow and superficial just to my personality. I'm not saying it is. And God met me so well in that deeper hunger that is, is how he made me. God created me with that hunger in me to encounter that deep calling to deep in God through the Holy Spirit. Deeply meaningful. Super glad. Super glad I'm on that page. Not the cynical page that I can easily walk into. How do you know about me? Nathaniel asked. 
And Jesus replied, I could see you under the fig tree before Philip found you. And, and people are like, that just can't be enough. That just can't be enough. He, he must have some, done something, or Jesus must be um, kind of pointing to something, kind of some secret. And I, I just think it's enough. I think like, wow, okay, I was under that fig tree. I was sitting there. Maybe I was sitting there wondering. Maybe I was sitting there disappointed. Maybe I was sitting there, I don't know. So often for me, when the world makes no sense, nature alone does. <laughs> So often, so often, you can find me, you can find me. All my life I climb trees and just, you could find me in a tree just thinking or reading a book. But anyway, he was under the fig tree before Philip found you. Mm. And here's Nathaniel's reply. Teacher, you are the Son of God, the King of Israel. So this amazing declaration, this amazing declaration comes out of Nathaniel. Like, wow, okay, you are the Son of God. You are the king of Israel. You are that real deal, that real, the true royal one that was and is to return. You are he. And Jesus asked him, do you believe all this just because I told you I had seen you under the fig tree? Yes, for us cynics, something real. For us cynics, the real comes into our life and we are overjoyed because our cynicism comes from the false. The, the, the things that we were told were real, and then we got there, and there was just so much we didn't like. And, and, and you know, when it says in Jesus there's no darkness, it, it means that when we bump into Jesus, oh, sometimes it's difficult, but it's always, I want to say delicious. It's always good. It's always worthy. That's why all of creation says worthy, worthy, worthy in Revelations. Because we meet this thing that is genuinely bigger than us. That's what we're yearning for, right? I'm yearning for something bigger. I'm yearning for a salvation that's not just the same as um, Ecclesiastes, the most cynical, you know, truly cynical book in scripture. We're yearning for something good. We're yearning and, and that just that touch of truth of Jesus just awaken Nathaniel from his cynicism. And then Jesus says, do you believe all this just because I told you I had seen you under the fig tree? And then I love this. You will see greater things than this. You, Nathaniel, I want to say his name right there. You will see greater things than this. This is just, just, just a small touch because Christ is going to release. He's going to release all of heaven. You know, greater things. You're going to do greater things than me. We don't even know what all Nathaniel's life entails afterwards. We, I know there's a, a, there's a great painting of Nathaniel, one of my favorites of I think it's Renoir, but I can get things so wrong. It's, anyway, ah, I'm on a tangent. And then he said, here he says, okay, you will see greater things than this, Nathaniel. You're going to see greater things than this. I'm inviting you to something big and good. And then he said, the truth is, you will see heaven open and the angels of God going up and down upon the Son of Man. Now, for those of us that know scripture, we know that's a clear reference to Jacob when he has this encounter with God and there's angels coming up and down. And it's this idea that heaven is so removed, heaven and earth are so removed. But there's this moment, right, where heaven comes down and Jacob, the angels are moving. There's a connection between Jacob in this very vulnerable moment of his life and the God of eternity, God himself, heaven that there's this connection, movement, communication in between the two. And Jesus says to Nathaniel, you're going to see something like this. And, oh, on the cross, that's fully opened, right? Our communication, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians, God gave gift to humanity. The gifts God has brought to us, right? And there, there's tangible gifts, specific gifts. That, that's definitely true in the New Testament. Specific gifts are given to us. But there's just the awakening of our conversation and communication with heaven through Jesus Christ. So he tells Nathaniel right there, you, my dear, are going to be one who's, who's not going to be lowly. You're not going to be stuck in your disappointment and cynicism. You're going to see heaven. They sometimes we use that expression, heaven invading earth. But you're going to see humanity communicating and God communicating and this beautiful communication between earth, life here on earth, and, and heaven. And disappointment will not be the lens through which you understand and know your faith. Salvation, that, that word salvation sometimes mm, got whittled down to are you going to heaven or hell? That's, that's not the word salvation. 
the word salvation can mean right now, God save me, I'm desperate. But salvation can mean my life, right, abundant life. My life's awakened. My life's awakened to a new reality. And all that disappointment and depression I've been living under is, is, is no longer there because this higher thing is communicating with my little S spirit, you know, big creator of the world spirit is communicating with my little S spirit. And it's a joyous thing. It's a joyous thing to, to join into that conversation of Father and Son and Holy Spirit, that oneness, to be a part of it. And God says, no, Nathaniel, I, I'm, I saw you under that fig tree, but I assure you, you're going to see far greater things. I just want to invite you, if, if cynicism is what's on your tongue, you, you can tell. I, I, there were seasons of my life where uh, the words out of my mouth were, um, were not of life. They were of death. And God met me in that place and showed me... <laughs> This thing in me so yearning, mm, I had become quite dead. I was very angry, super angry. <laughs> I won't go into that. But I was super angry because of what I didn't see. And I was covetous. I think there was a covetousness of that kind of cynicism where I didn't have the courage to say, hey, God, how can we make this together? <laughs> I didn't have any faith in God. And, and people, hmm, it didn't matter. But, but then, uh, through a wonderful brother of mine, an actual brother, <laughs> I, I got to bump into a, a, to life, abundant life. I got to feel the Holy Spirit. I got to feel the joy of salvation inside of me. I got to get rid of all my cynical poetry that I had found meaning in for a good decade that didn't really have much life to speak. And I got to walk into the the gift of life that opened that ladder of heaven and earth, that communication with God, and got to be about God's purposes and got to know joy in the midst of being about God's purposes, even as, um, even as, let me see, even as earth was still so full of pain, I could feel the prevailing goodness of grace. And the Bible says, be anxious about nothing. And I could feel that God is on the side of love and life and winning the battle winning the battle but I my brother said to me you're you are you're you're not on the right side of the conversation you're you're on the side of the conversation where you only know loss but there's a place where God's communicating that's full of joy and life and you're lighting you know there's that old don't curse the darkness but light a candle and and you're going to not just light any old candle you're going to be lit by the candle of Jesus Christ's love and it's going to make you burning bright in the midst of the darkness and that's been my experience so I want to encourage anyone for whom mm, darkness has you kind of a little unlit <laughs> uh, and you'd like the love of Christ to light you up in a way that the, the fire within you is brighter than the darkness around you. I encourage you to, to ask Christ to come into your life and do that. God bless you.